one person's personal setbacks create a ripple effect of change in the world that can go on then snowball and impact society as a whole. Where does one person get the strength to convert their pain into a long-lasting institution that goes on and impacts thousands of lives? Today, we're going to discuss these questions and a lot more. Welcome to If I Had Not Failed with Mansi Agarwal on News24. Our guest today has been fondly referred to as the Mother Teresa of Nepal. She has rescued and rehabilitated over 18,000 women and girls. She won the CNN Hero of the Year Award in 2010. Today, we are here at Maiti Nepal, the little world, the little oasis, the haven of peace that she has created for all the people that fondly love her and respect her. Yes, I am talking about none other than Miss Anuradha Koirala, the lady with the strengths that we can all be proud of. Namaste, ma'am. Thank you so much for being here. In fact, thank you so much for inviting us here at Maiti Nepal. It really warms my heart to see the wonderful institution that you've created around something that you so truly believe in. I've been following you for the last 40 minutes around here and I'm amazed at the force of nature you are out here. I see you as a very strong woman. But what has been your greatest failure in your life? Thank you, Vanshuzi, and uh, uh, thank you for following me for 40 minutes. Yeah, and of course, my, I think, not think, I believe, my greatest failure was my decision to get married. Yeah, and my father, till today, I have his letter where he has written, I took you as my son. Today you have betrayed me. Yeah? Because everybody thought, had a different perception of me. Yeah? And they thought that uh, I would be something very different. Yeah? Uh, but uh, then my marriage, as I told you, this marriage where I made the decision was wrong. Yeah? But even then, though, it was wrong. I spent, um, say, about uh, 15, 20 years, 25 years, yeah. And uh, But uh, till today, I am still in that marriage because I haven't divorced. I have not done anything. So, yeah, any anything, but I'm still, yeah. So, recently, he expired also. It's the fourth month. I had to do all the rituals, yeah. And this, my decision, as my father wrote, was the greatest mistake, yeah? Greatest mistake and I get biggest failure. But uh, today I feel sometimes, you know, Baba wrote that. He was correct. But uh, Baba would have been very happy if Baba and Amma was there to see me where I am today, yeah, and what I am doing. How did your, that failure, the wrong decision according to you, how did that change the course of your life? You see, during those days, yeah, being a literate person, being married to a very nice family, I belong to also a very strong family. Yeah? So, and that time the political situation was not that so much. So I did not do say about the right, you know what women speak about now, right of the woman, there's that. I did not know anything, yeah? I did not know anything. And then we in those days were very, you would have been stigmatized if I had gone to the police and reported against him, yeah? So I could not go to the police also. So I just, you know, left without any papers, without anything, documents. I had a small son who was four years old. I just left like that. And my journey began then. You know, when I, when I see you, I've seen you working here. You are this force. Everyone's coming and, you know, paying their respects to you. Everyone's coming and everyone's like touching your feet and, you know, giving you the reverence that you totally deserve. And yet behind this strong facade, why do I sense a lot of pain? Because that's what's made your journey what it is. I think uh, you asked me the first question, what was my failure? Yeah, And what was my decision which made me a failure? Yeah, 
my decision made me a failure. You see, uh, that decision which I made itself, you know, uh, continues. Yeah, it hits me, and it reminds me that I should be doing more. Yeah, and as I told you, in a place where I had no one. Yeah. I had only my certificates, yeah, and my little son, to and a very young woman, yeah, and a very young woman to spend alone was a big challenge, yeah, and I did not take a single penny from anyone till today. I have not taken any thing from my family. That's my husband's family. So the only thing I have taken is the name Koirala, yeah. So as I told you, the I always thought of the stigma. I always thought of my parents, yeah. I thought of his parents, his home, and then you know, that is how it went on, and it is still going on. I've never thought that I should go do this that. I've, then after that, as a as a profession, my profession. My career, since I was nineteen uh, years, I've been a teacher. Yeah, and uh, that continued after I left him also. And then my son and myself, we lived together. Yeah, he grew up. Uh, as I told you, uh, my family was also very well to do, and they also. But he had to live uh, according to my. Source, yeah, because there is a saying, "Cut your dress according to the material." Yeah, so he had to live. So he also grew up in a very tight situation. Yeah, but the being a teacher, getting little salary, pay the house rent, feed him, then slowly send him to school, his clothes and everything. So it was that. Yeah, but uh, going into this work now, as you said. People are doing namaste. This, that does not make me proud. That makes me feel more that I have more responsibility to do, more work to do because it has not finished. So I'm still guilty. You know when, as you speak to me, I can't imagine the kind of strength it must have taken for you in those days. We're talking of many years ago in a very patriarchal society like ours, to actually walk out with your little child. How did you manage to talk to yourself or convince yourself to do it? I think you know, uh, I had to, as every mother, yeah, every mother would do the same thing. I, I, you know, it was a story which I left. Yeah, it was a story which I left, but I had to go ahead because I had the responsibility of my son. Yeah, I looked at him. And I thought I should work for him. Yeah, I always. He has to be educated. He has to get the best. Every mother thinks that. Yeah, but I did not. I know I did not give him all the best I could. Yeah, but uh, I did my best. But you've been a mother to so many people around the country, and you have this this sense of doing your best for everybody. You you have been the person that we look up to, and we. As a society, as a generation, are extremely proud of you. How does your son feel about it? I think that question I could not answer. I think you have to ask him. Yeah, if he is around, Has... he is not around here just now. Right. You would have asked him because I, I cannot say, Baba, how do you feel about me? I, I cannot. I want say... to ask him. This is going to be a fun thing to know because, you know, when we look at your story from the outside, we don't see the struggles. Of course, there must be some pain. There must be Trump's kind of struggle, which made you the strong person that you are. But we cannot see it. I cannot even perceive the strength that you hold inside of you. But your son has been a part of the story very, very closely till today. Till today, and he's a very close knit part of the story. And I'm confident that he's extremely proud of all the wonderful achievements you've done, and more importantly, the impact you've created in the world. Do you sometimes think that the impact itself, in a lot of ways, has many expectations and weighs you down a bit? The impact of my work, yeah, for me, is more responsibilities. Yeah, so it's a more cycle. Responsibility. Yeah, yeah. I never stop. Yeah, that is the impact is more responsibility. Continue, continue, do, do. 
and then I cannot stop. Yeah. That's amazing. How supportive has the rest of your close circle? I'm not talking about society. I'm talking about your closest friends, your closest family. How supportive have they been in your journey in, in getting out of, you know, your social structure and getting out into this field? My, for me, uh, Manchizi, uh, I only think of my parents, uh, you know, my mother, after I did everything, my father uh, hardly said anything, yeah, but I have, the other day was after I was reading his letters. Mm, but my mother, even when I was, I had a son, she used to bring in a trunk where I stayed, she used to bring life boy soap, uh, what is this? Uh, to put in the face, yeah, she used to bring and she used to bring towels, she used to bring undergarments, she used to, you know, uh, she used to bring some clothes for me, you know, I, they were my closest friends, yeah, both of them. It was not only Amako, Kura, I think, right. it was also my father, I think, right. Anu doesn't have anything, Anu grew up like this, uh, Anu is now, uh, you know, suffering, so go and give her something, yeah. Right. So, and my mother, the last day also she said, I will not go and stay with, the, I will come, but I will not stay with my sister Armina. Yeah, uh, I will stay with you. I know you have only one room and one kitchen, but I'll stay with you because uh, the way you cook, you know, in one pressure cooker, you cook everything and it's so tasty. Yeah. Uh, I know what she meant, yeah? yeah. She was supportive to me. She right. did not want to support others. So my biggest support were they. Yeah. Today I miss them because they're not here. And how important was that support for you at that point? Very important. Very important, right? They came and they said, the guardian, let's go. Uh, we'll support you. As the sons will give you everything, chhodde, you you can do. You are literate, yeah. So God knows also, We know you are a fighter. But even then, it was very very challenging for a woman of young age to survive, yeah. As I told you, I had no other options than to, you know, work as a teacher, because that was my profession. Yeah. It's very. Very, very difficult, but uh, but I feel that it is also uh, very uh, it gave me strength. It gave me strength. Yeah, my father and mother's support gave me strength that I should fight, that I should stand. Yeah. Do you remember a single moment which was a turning point that sort of just changed your perspective or sort of just gave you a different way of looking at things? Do you remember a definitive moment like that? Yes, of course. Yeah. I think uh, to change myself where I am today, yeah, I had al always heard about trafficking of women, exploitation of women. As, as I told you, for myself also going to the police station, I would have done, but I knew about the laws, I knew about everything, but I didn't do because of the stigma. Till today, woman, woman, like whatever, whichever activists go on the road and say, we want this, we want that, still we are in, we, we are not, uh, we are not given that what we want. Ma'am, you talk about all of this, this struggle, and that's what's given you the strength. At this point in your life, would you trade the struggle for anything else? Not at all. Not at all. I told you just now, yeah. Uh, I was working for trafficking, sexual exploitation of children. I really didn't want to look for, uh, you know, the daily wages. I do not want to call them sex workers or something, daily wages. I did not want to look at them. But now they also have become my part, yeah, because all of them did not go uh, with their their will, 
they were tricked from the village and brought here and you know put in a different places where they are working so i am supporting them and uh, for this for this i could not trade with anybody even 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 if they say you know like i'll give you the whole of nepal i would not do leave this yeah because this is not what people have put into me this is my desire this is my wish i want to do you know i i took my wish and i made a mistake to get married as my father said but this is not a mistake at all i am doing right and i know whatever i'm doing is been guided by them you've created this sort of world that's a safe place for so many different kinds of people how often do you think you want to retreat and go back into your childhood and rewrite the story take a retreat will not work with me because uh, it's like addiction to me yeah this is my passion this is my baby this whatever you say it is this is my you know my addiction yeah everybody has an addiction i have this addiction yeah i don't have any other addiction <laughs> except this yeah so 5:30 i'm here and this side the bigger ones this side the smaller ones they start their bhajan so i'm with them yeah and then i go around there because you see the compound is so clean everything is so in place we don't have any servants they all have as i was brought up in the school i have done the same routine for them they have to do everything even if you go to the rooms you will see it's very very nice so then I, 9 o'clock i just go half past 8 9 o'clock sometimes 8 also i go in the morning and then change and then i come back at Uh, quarter to ten, then I'm continuously here till five o'clock, and then I go for a break for a tea and snacks, and then I come back. Eleven thirty, yeah, eleven o'clock I go back. Eleven thirty I sleep nicely. I get a good sleep, yeah. But then again, as you have asked me so many questions just now, eleven o'clock I feel I start, you know, thinking of. the whole day work and i feel that i i have not been able to do why is it like this and then i weep for sometimes i think how do i then i you know i my brain works and then i say okay i will do this i will do that thinking all about my work how to you know go ahead then you know slowly i get to sleep and the next morning at uh 4:43 4:45 i get up and then i'm here again nobody can stop me i think everybody says everybody is saying uh, even my executive director my little little boys who have uh, become big boys and big girls they say now i think you should take rest you just tell us to do we will do but no because yeah, i'm talking to you here and my mind is totally outside because now i'm giving vaccine to the sex workers uh it's very difficult you know you speak about how you go back home at night at 11 o'clock and then you weep do you sometimes find it difficult to detach yourself from the from the work you're doing do you find it difficult to find your space your safe space not at all i cannot detach myself you cannot detach at all yeah my son is there my grandson is there I have not given time to them now also to my son grandson also we do not we have not sat together and eaten for a long long time yesterday i thought i would eat with them at night then again we could not make it how important is that that addiction like you called it addiction or yeah. how important is that passion in your work do you think you would have survived for all these years without it because what i see and what i'm amazed by is a the variety of things you do in a typical day because i've just been with you and i'm amazed at how you know everybody's name how you're sort of coordinating and orchestrating all these different things but also more than that how much of that will do you need even at this age this stage to be that strength to give people that strength how much of that will is important your question answers that uh your question right yeah? today you have come to interview me me with the first question where do you think i feel right right so that failure is my strength 
this i think is is something that me as a person i think what you've just told me is something that possibly embodies everything that the next generation needs to know hopefully hopefully because we when we see you we see the cnn hero we see the lady who goes out there boldly and who speaks we see the lady who walks around and who's handling 20 things at the same time i don't know how you manage to sort of multitask like that what we don't understand that inside your heart it is that one failure that one mistake that one setback that one obstacle which still keeps you going on all these years and it will keep me going on till i go to pashupati arya ghat of course and we're we're hoping that that's for the next 20 30 years because there are just so many more things you want to do what is the next step you want to take i think uh, the only thing you know you just mentioned uh, everybody is so i don't know I, either i should call them uh, they don't know me or they don't know me they only mention cnn hero i don't know why you know because that is the cnn hero padma shri all these uh, you know uh, abe uh, all these big big awards from sweden everywhere all around the world these this is the thing yeah which is put you know uh, have you seen a porter carrying like uh, yeah, in yeah, a doko the, the burden. a burden so this is a burden they have put into my head to end this crime which is happening to children and women yeah so until i know i cannot end it but i can of course you know make it a little bit little and then yes my people are there hopefully they will work according to my my dreams which i had to you know at least you can you cannot say i do not want to use the word eradicate yeah, yeah? at least minimize it right. yeah i hope others will do i have done my best it's not like before it's gone little down yeah but i hope after me there's someone i i still want to live for a, you know until i really minimize it yeah but uh, i don't know what happens everything is upstairs but i'm telling you one thing how strong do you think you are mentally how much control do you think you can have over your mind and your feelings at any given point what does it take to ruffle you can you see that can you see the strength no what do you uh, you ask me what is my strength yeah how strong do you feel you are mentally and emotionally because you're working in a very wide variety of areas with very different kinds of people each one has a burden each one has a history each one has a story that if you and me here we will start crying once you have answered my question i right. think yeah the pain and the sorrow of the women and the girls and the children are, is my strength and still you can smile I love I love the spirit you have to be able to do that with this positivity because when I come I here I do not I do not cry in front of the children I really become strong yeah but at night I revive their stories and then you know I have not been able to do this I have not done this to her I'm not done this to someone I not I remember as you said I rem- and these staff who come from 10 to 5 they just go yeah mm-hmm. but one uh, person is always next to me my executive director he has been working for me for last uh, 24 years he also gets fed up sometimes he says why don't you stop uh, calling at night talk about something nice and all i remember every- and he says how do you know the names i w- i told yeah? you the same thing i say I-, i say that is my passion you all are you are you all are supporting me but this is my passion to know everybody how do you manage to i even know all the babies who are little little ones little little ones also here little little ones little ones also so all of them early morning i come around here and you see you until and unless you go through the pain i have gone nobody can work on this issue nobody i went through the same 
that is why i'm working it's unbelievable how positive this place feels in spite of the fact that this place itself comes and is born out of pain and carries the pain of so many people yet as i sit here today it feels like a nice like a nice lounge like a hotel like a garden it feels so positive and so full of love and energy and i'm guessing it's your energy that's flowing through this and Not the only fact mine, i think uh, uh, someone like a positive person like you have come also you are also giving me energy now i feel my responsibility now is more to work more harder to make you see that one day i have stopped something or one day i have minimized you know, ma make a change yeah it's amazing ma'am and hearing your story hearing the stories that you carry in your heart and that's what fuels you i think this is something that we need to learn as a generation because this is a show where we talk about failures we normalize failures and struggles and setbacks and i meet so many students and they say oh you know ma'am i had a fight with my boyfriend i don't know what to do with my life but when i hear your story everything else seems like a little dot everything else seems like just nothing if you can use that failure that and make it into your biggest strength and impact the lives of thousands of women and create a ripple effect in this part of the world i'm guessing you have been the biggest icon and you don't need to be a cnn hero to do that you are this person you are this this lady that we completely uh, look up to like talking about uh, you know how children want to commit suicide when there is a failure that's uh, their stupidity yeah a person like you should sometimes you know my executive director was saying when you should tell mansi to come and do some uh, what's it motivational talks yeah uh, i just saw a girl when i talking to you she was absolutely gone case she wanted to commit suicide yeah but now she has been here for 11 days now she started doing nice work she is doing nice work in the workshop yeah so i don't think so when you talk to the children when you you know the uh, I, i believe as a teacher yeah my time the latti was there yes. yeah but now they say no latti no, nothing yeah but but no latti or something so i i i feel that still hum do with the culture we have uh, you know everything which we have we have to continue like uh, do this do that do that do that we have to teach the children still it's not we are not still westernized we are talking in english right Th this is something i think it is an international language right. yeah but our culture is there yeah our culture is there so you have to do this you have to do that you don't have to do this we don't have to do that that the children have to know yeah your culture which we have which right. is very rich has to continue right you know? absolutely this is the school mabani we had our time we had uh, uh, samajik shiksha uh -huh. naitik shiksha mm -hmm. this kind yeah where i not where i studied in where i studied i had social studies right. yeah it was very different but here naitik shiksha and samajik shiksha i was also part of it yeah uh, teaching so that naitik shiksha and that would that would really for me once you are very disciplined then everything is gone that is where my father was dissatisfied with me that is where he was that is how he wrote the letter because he thought i cheated him he wrote it yeah he brought up with me with yoga ra yoga ra yoga ra yoga ra but then i did my own way that is where if it was others like you said i was a failure i could have committed suicide but then i had that saying of my father and my mother i wanted to show was it your father's upbringing and the morals that of gave you strength of my grandfather and my mother's and my my mother and my grandfather and my father was in the army but since he was in the army so he was like yeah so the these were the ones who gave me the strength it's amazing ma'am to hear all these wonderful things we're coming towards the end of everything that i want to talk to you about one question remains what advice or what message let's not call it advice what message do you have to share with somebody especially let's say a girl or a woman who's struggling a lot maybe in a relationship maybe otherwise what would you have to say to them 
about their own strength, about how they perceive themselves. Now, two things. Right. You have to differentiate when you ask the question. Literate wala ki not literate wala. Look, yeah? Let's start with literate. Yeah. Literate wala, say, what they have to do is they are already educated. Correct. When you are educated, you have the certificate. Yeah? Correct. This person, I can get many, but this certificate took me years to get this certificate. Right. So I have to follow this certificate and continue my life. Right. Yeah? Absolutely. And for the unliterate ones, right. illiterate ones, right. I have been lobbying with the government. I've been lobbying with foreign people that education right. should be compulsory, right. free, right. and finable. Okay. Yeah. So that all the girl child goes to school. Right. Right. And if it is free, then they will go. And then if it is finable, parents will send, send them. them. Parents will be compelled to sell them, them for a so, completely different motive, maybe. Right. Ma'am, how important do you think financial freedom is for a girl? Very, 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 very. Yeah. But it does not mean that, uh, like, till today, so many in the villages, yeah. You, this is a very good question. After a long time answering this question, very that is why all my children you can go and see just now, the bigger ones, uh, you can ask them how they earn. Uh, till today, I doubt this people who are working with us, this male people in my office, here with you and me, till today, to buy a tikka also we have to ask our husband. Every time. Why? That is why I said the certificate, the yes. education is very, very important. Then we don't have to depend on them. Till today, Mansi, since I left my parents, even when I was with my husband, I did not take a single penny because I was educated, I could work and I worked. It's amazing to hear that and it's also amazing to hear that even at that point, I'm talking about many years ago, we're talking about 40 years ago. 40, 50 years ago. Right. For you to have that kind of strength to be able to do that is just absolutely amazing and on that note, ma'am, thank you so much for giving us your time. It really means a lot to me to get a chance to be sitting here with you and to have this conversation. It is thank something you that is... so much, Mansi. But uh, ending it, everybody, everybody, those who are listening to both of us, should not only listen and say, this is, listening is listening, seeing is seeing, Mansi and Anuradha Devi, but everybody should take this very seriously that girls are our pride right yeah that is what i want yeah. girls are our pride yeah so let's work together join hands create a society free of exploitation of children and women yeah which is as i told you earlier is a shame to humanity let's end this even if we don't end it Let's make it, minimize it. Right, absolutely. Because it is true, right? How we treat our girls really shows what kind of a society we are, how civilized we are as a society, and how we deal with our children and our little girls is, is such a huge part of who we are as a people. And I'm so glad, ma'am, that not only are you a voice for us, not only are you a voice that's going out there and talking about these things, but you've actually worked on the field and you've got that experience and that strength and that honesty that really gives you that strength. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being this, this absolute icon, this figure that we look up to and this figure that gives us hope, that gives married women especially hope in their relationships, outside their relationships, whatever it is, that they too have a voice, a will, and they can go out there and change the world and create a dent in the universe, a dent of in the course, positive of way. Of course, of course. And thank you so much, ma'am, for welcome. being that person thank and you. for giving us this time. It really means a lot. It also means a lot that you hosted us here today because I got to experience and honestly for me following you there and just come seeing back, the see thing. all of them from school oh, online, come school. online online class I have hey, a, my own school that's amazing so for me to just see all of these things is wonderful 
and i'm so glad that this happened thank you so much ma'am it means a lot thank you so much before this conversation and before today's visit at mighty nepal i always wondered where this seemingly frail woman got the spirit and the strength from after this conversation i realized that her strength comes from her pain the honesty comes from the pain and her words translate and show that to the world and more importantly the truth of her cause and the passion in her heart give her the energy to go on thank you so much ma'am following you around here has given me a window into a completely different world a window into a world of possibility a window into a world of hope thank you so much for being the inspiration you are thank you so much for being a torch bearer for women's rights all over the world thank you